Um, Bill from AnimationWorldNetwork.com asks, how does Prince of Persia raise the VFX bar? You've obviously done a lot of VFX heavy movies. How does this kind of raise the bar in terms of your filmmaking? Well, I think, you know, every time we, we approach a movie, uh, the computer graphics and power becomes stronger and doubles and triples. So we can do a lot more things that we couldn't do in the past. And it's easier to do. Unfortunately, it gets a little cheaper. So, you know, there are more artists that are joining um, that field and, and we're getting better computer graphics because more talented people doing it. Uh, Dana from cinemaspy.com asks, how do you start and approach um, a video adap adaptation and, uh, and turn it into a full-fledged hour and a half long movie? Well, it's, it all comes from story and character. And Jordan Mechner, who you know, created the game, came in and pitched us a story that we were intrigued with. He wrote the first screenplay, and then we brought in some other big Hollywood writers to come in and embellish the characters and the plot. So you start from the basic idea of, of the game. Sean from 411mania.com asks, many people dismiss adaptations when they stray too far from the source material, whether it's books, video games, classic films, or comics. Um, how do you respond to those critics when they you know, kind of don't judge it on the merits of that actual movie? Well, you know, I think what you have to do is you have to try to take what's best out of the game or the book and, and try to, to, to work with that. And also, you know, you know novels you know, go on for a long time, and you know, we try to make movies under two hours. So uh, sometimes you have to cut things out, which is unfortunate. Um, how did uh, producing Prince of Persia differ from other epic films that you've tackled? You've done so many um, different sorts of large-scale films. Were there, are there any surprises left? Uh, there's always surprises. You know, every time you take on a big movie, you, you find things that uh, are, are fun to learn. And in, in, in Morocco in the summer, is not a place you'd like to be. It's 120 degrees, and it was not fun to be there in June and July. But it's a beautiful country, and you know, to have the ability to go up in the mountains, in the Andes Mountains, and then go in these beautiful deserts uh, was a real thrill for us. Um, what initially attracted you to the project, and how did you and Jordan originally get connected? Well, Jordan came in and pitched the idea to us. Somebody brought him in, and, and he had a, a real vision for the story, and, you know, we hired him to write the screenplay. Um, Ray from thecartel.com asks, what was your favorite part about shooting the film? And if you had to name one element that makes the movie really stand out, what would it be? I think, you know, the, the, uh, the dagger rewind is, is really spectacular. And our visual effects work beautifully. We had some wonderful artists working on that to, to create something that was unique and special. I think that's uh, kind of the most, one of the most interesting things you can see in the movie. Excellent. Jamie from movieweb.com asks, can you talk about choosing Mike Newell to direct this film? It's, such, it's so large in scope and has such a, you know, a, a huge and kind of massive tone to it. Uh, what was it about Newell that assured you that he was going to be the man for the job? Well, when you look at his previous work, you know, when you hire a director who's not a first-time director, you get to see their films. So from Donnie Brasco, he showed he can do realism. We wanted the movie to have some realism to it. Then, then you saw Four Weddings and a Funeral. He had humor. You can tell he, he can handle actors and, and find funny things for them. And then you see the Harry Potter film he did, you can, you can understand fantasy. So the combination of humor, fantasy, and realism is exactly what we're looking for. Excellent. Steve from Collider.com asks, how difficult was the sand effect, uh, the sand of time effect, uh, actually, to pull off? And did you have a lot of debate where to use it and how to use it? You're absolutely right. There was a lot of debate. You know, how many times to use it, how to do it. It took us months and months and months to come up with the right dynamics for it and the right design for it. We, th we went through a lot of different designs, a lot of different visual artists worked on it, a lot of illustrators worked on it. So we finally got something we are very comfortable with that Mike really loved. Uh, do you kind of, looking back on it, do you ever wish that you could add it to more scenes? You know, I'm always looking to, to uh, you know, make, add scenes to our movies. So that, that's the fun part. That's something we always love to do. But, you know, you, you don't want to uh, have, have an audience sit in the theater too long. Fred from SciFiWire.com asks, you obviously um, are very involved in not only the theatrical portion, but the home entertainment portion as well. Can they expect any cool extras on the DVD? Always. You know, there's actually a scene that we didn't use that you'll see. Uh, Mike was very economical in his shooting, so, you know, there weren't that many scenes to see. But we always add things that are fun and interesting for you guys to look at. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I have to keep it relatively short, but uh, thanks for joining us today. And, thanks for uh, having me. It's a we'll pleasure. be right back with Gemma, everybody. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.